Okay, boys and girls of the project, it's time to get perhaps, perhaps, partially excited for my first real air gun review in TMP. Now, I know it has been a while since I promised this content specifically, <clears throat> hard swallow, 12 years. 12 years, dude. Now, you may doubt me. As exhibit number one, I will show you this receipt dated August 2010 in the project. These guns were purchased with advertising dollars, which I used to make in YouTube. Not no more. They took that away from me a long time ago. But here's a receipt. The damage on this one is $1,133.82 paid to purchase the guns you see here on the receipt. These will be reviewed. Some are no longer made and I don't really care. They're still getting reviewed because I paid money for them. And they are similar to other guns that I may mention in those reviews. There you go. Exhibit number one, 12 years. Holy crap, Nun Fancy, I gave up hope. I know you did, and I bet some air gun fans in the project were like, mm, man, when's he gonna do like real air gun reviews? Huh, they probably left. I hope they come back with this. Yeah, well, it happens right now. That's the answer. Right now, my first real air gun review. Now, I say real because I have posted some other Gun, air gun reviews like the Red Rider, some BB pistol reviews, they fall into mostly the toy and replica category. The Tommy Gun from Legends uh, by Umarex, I've posted that review. I have an MP40 review coming out. That's done with Mrs. Nut and Fancy. These are toys. Uh, they're replicas, they're very low power, and uh, I would do them all over again. You're gonna see more reviews along those lines. They'll fall into the toy or replica category. Maybe toy isn't the best answer for that. Uh, replica, let's just say low power. As a foundation to all my air gun reviews, I do ask that you watch my philosophy of use video on air guns. A lot of interesting stuff put in there. It talks about any aspect that I had in mind at the time when I made it. Please watch that. Yes, you have time. Just put it on 1.25 speed, rip through it. That way, I don't have to make each of these air gun videos an hour long. I mean, there's a lot to cover, especially with this first PCP gun that I'm reviewing. There's a lot to cover, but I'm not going to make it an hour. Now, one thing I did not say in the air gun philosophy of use, I will include it in every air rifle, air pistol that I review, is I will classify it according to power levels, low, medium, and high. I might throw in an extra category later on extra high <laughs> we'll see and i'm not going to attach certain uh foot pounds of energy or velocity figures to these categories it will just be my take after having tested the gun and i'll let you know this is a low power gun this is a medium power gun this is a high power air gun we're starting off the real air gun reviews here in the project with a high power that's how i'm going to classify it pre-charged pneumatic gun now i will assume in this video you guys don't really know that much or if anything about air gunning so i will try to explain some of the basics to you i can't spend a ton of time on this again it'll be too long of a video but when we talk about a pre-charged pneumatic that means it has an air reservoir that is charged to a certain pressure that the gun draws from that reservoir to propel the pellet or slug as the case may be. These guns have a lot of advantages in that they will shoot more shots. They're quiet usually if they're shrouded or somehow suppressed. Uh, you can do a repeater off of them like uh, a repeating action i.e. a side lever charging which this gun has. Lots of advantages. They do have the disadvantage of you have to somehow charge that air reservoir with pressure. You can use a hand pump, which I did with this gun, and it is a complete pain in the ass. It is a good workout. There are only so, uh, only so many foot-pounds. There's only so much PSI you can put in there with a hand pump. I basically gave up on this one after 3,000 PSI. 
In the future, I will be using a scuba tank charge or I might be using a high pressure comp compressor. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this develops as we go along. Keep in mind, by the way, firearm aficionados, I think of which I have many here in the project, this air gun content does not replace gun content. Okay, so here again is the beautiful PSA dagger. Yep, link below. It is a Glock 19 clone of sorts. Super high value. This one has suppressor sights. Go watch my PSA dagger review. I'll keep doing gun reviews, so relax if you think that, oh, it's just going to be an air gunning channel. Truth be told, I'm not a gun channel at all. I'm a gear adventure channel. I review watches, for instance. There is the Heritage Aviator by Santo. Forget it. It's sold out. It was gone a long time ago. Here comes the beautiful Wee Knives Sear. Link below. Beautiful knife. Oh, my gosh. So all this is cool gear. It falls under the cool gear umbrella. Good gear. Good gear for the good guys, that's you. I'm not a gun channel, I never have been. I'm a gear adventure channel, whatever falls under that umbrella fits, I review it. On we go, boys and girls. The first gun I am choosing to review, like full length style, real gun is a really excellent, excellent PCP. No one told me to review it. I went out and researched, 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 spent my donation dollars on this. It wasn't given to me. Here we go with the Air Venturi Avenger. This is the first one I've chosen to review. Let me tell you right now, buy it. Buy it. There, I just eliminated all the drama of the review. You could actually quit watching right now. Just buy it. Yes, it is that awesome. Very inexpensive too. There you go, there's your review. Thanks for coming out, sure appreciate it. We'll see you next gun review. <clears throat> Oh, you want more? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I have a lot to say then. I'll make my case why this is an awesome gun. Okay, and I told you it's a pre-charged pneumatic PCP. Here's your air reservoir right here. It's 180 cc. Not the biggest air reservoir out there, but they have to balance it out with looks and balance and the application for this gun, which I think is actually hunting and like i said in the pou video that's where my focus is better said pest control not hunting but killing pests and i'll put it a channel link below and i really love this channel uh, and they show them taking out pests all the time where they live and it is fantastic i'm not going to put it in video form because the channel may go away and this video will be out here for the next hundred years yeah, but go watch them taking out their pests. Now, in my realm of existence, I really don't have that many pest animals that need controlling. Not pigeons, not rats, not ground squirrels. Uh, let me take that back. There are starlings, so but they're hard to find. And when I find a like a flock of starlings, I will prey upon them, and I would do it with this gun in a heartbeat. Philosophy of use will be as indicated in the previous video. It applies to this. Primarily, I would say hunting, pest control, target, and recreational purposes. Just like we talked in the POU video. This is an Air Venturi pre-charged pneumatic. The first thing I love about this gun is that unlike many of the air rifles out there, whether they're brake barrels, i.e. spring powered, other PCPs, this thing is lightweight. Under six and a half pounds, 6.4 pounds without a scope. That is pretty darn lightweight. To credit the use of a plastic stock, we're into features, by the way, which I really don't mind. There's a lot of five-star reviews on the Air Venturi Avenger and all their calibers. It's offered in 177, 22, which I bought for this one, 22 cal, since I really love that caliber. It's very versatile. And they also make it in 25 caliber, which I also love. Lots of five-star reviews on this gun. There are criticisms on the stock, and I really don't get it. Because this, I, I want to say it's a price point, pre-charged pneumatic. Because for a pre-charged pneumatic air rifle, you can easily spend a thousand bucks. Easy. If you buy an FX, $2,200 just 
entry fee, just the gun itself, then you have to buy whatever accessories you want for it, your charging devices, it can go up to three grand, four grand, easy. This is gonna be very affordable. Back to the stock though, I, I was shooting this and I, I didn't one, not even one time, and keep in mind, I am a stock snob. I didn't one time say, this stock sucks. Not one time, I was like, I like the stock. Here's a rubber butt pad that it comes with and it wasn't too grabby, I didn't have to tape it. It's got a deep full length pistol grip on it, I love that. High enough comb for uh, scope use. Very comfortable through here. There's places you can mount some swivel studs if you want. I mean, you could actually mount like a sling right through here if you wanted. I said swivel studs, you could, but uh, I meant to say like a sling point. Forward and aft. Love the pistol grip, you know, low traction. It's not laser stippled or anything. There's an attempt at it. Then we have a flat bottom for target use. And then we have a pick rail on the bottom so you can put your bipod on it. The, the one criticism I think guys will say, it, and I think this part is valid. They go, well, if I put a bipod on it, there's gonna be a little bit of flex in the stock. And I would agree with that, especially if the gun heats up. Like when I was shooting it, I think it was like 90 degrees. I, I have it on the target, I'll show you. But if it gets like 100 degrees, yeah, plastic stocks, flex, it could be a problem. I didn't notice it in my testing though, but there's your pick rail right here, dude. Decent four end right here, a, an attempt, a weak one at traction on the side. But heck, if I don't like the traction, I'll just put skateboard tape on it. And it's a relatively slick surface. It's lightly textured in the four end right here. So me being the air gun expert I am, I'll classify the stock as a complete win at its price point. Does it have second cool? No. I'm gonna review some guns that have some beautiful wood on them. And you know that here in TMP, we're all about the wood, right? Maintain the wood. I don't code, I carve wood. You're welcome. Yeah, and so you'll see some come on the camera that you'll just, oh, they have that first cool and second cool. This one's a practical stock, enough said. I really love the stock on this. Okay, once again, pre-charged pneumatic, air reservoir, barrel up here, the barrel is shrouded. Think of that as a suppressor. Completely legal, no paperwork needed. I really love it from the factory when a pre-charged pneumatic is shrouded or there's some attempt to quiet the shot. Kudos to Air Venturi. This one is quiet. I'm gonna show you how quiet it is, albeit I'm shooting in the desert. All testing was completed in field with this gun facing off with the curse of the damn desert. Quiet. Another benefit as indicated in the POU video. They're just quiet. And also you can make shots. I'm just going to bounce here real quick that I would not make with a 22 rifle, which is amazing. I love 22s. They are far superior than these PCPs, let's be honest, they are. But in a lot of situations, I don't want to shoot a 22. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have all those starlings in a tree. And the shot I'm making is at 80 yards. But I'm shooting up, I really don't have a backdrop. I would never do that shot unless I'm out in the middle of nowhere with a 22 because I don't know where that 22 round's going to land. With a pellet, I might because I know that after it hits the brush in the tree, the limbs, the leaves, whatever, and hopefully a bird, it's gonna to fall to the ground. It ain't gonna travel no mile. Now they're saying in the manual that this one can reach out to such and such yards, whatever. I'm saying like 400 yards maybe, and then it falls to the ground and it loses energy very quickly after 100 yards. That's another example of why this is such a great pest control tool. And that's how I think of it as a pest control tool. Back to the features barrels right here. You got a clamp that secures the barrel and the air reservoir together. Now, with a pre-charged pneumatic, it's all about the air. Lots and lots of hot air, just like I put out here in the project. <laughs> now, there's going to be two gauges on your Avenger. Okay, the first gauge 
uh, that I'm showing here is the fill, fill pressure. It's on the left side. Fill pressure. See that? This gun can theoretically take uh, pressures all the way up to 4,300 PSI. I didn't do that. I went to about 3,000 PSI for all my testing because I just got tired of hand pumping it. The gun too. Boom, that was a good one, nothing fancy. I love it. You got it. Now here's another gauge on the right side. This is regulator, pre regulator pressure. Now don't be overwhelmed by this because if you're new to, to air gunning, the pre-charged pneumatic thing, you're like, what the heck is that? Regulator pressure, what it means, and I'm gonna read this. This is good. A PCP, uh, PCP air rifle has a high pressure on the air reservoir. When firing the rifle, a hammer slams on a valve which will open a little and a certain quantity of air escapes. This allows the air flow, uh, air flow to speed up the pellet. In an unregulated air gun, you normally start with a pressure about 200 bar, but after every shot, this pressure will decrease. Will decrease. You can imagine when the hammer slams on the valve, there's 200 bar of primary pressure on the valve, it will only open a tiny bit and gives the pellet a certain speed. After a few shots, the primary pressure is reduced and there's far less pressure pushing against the valve, but the hammer still slams with the same force. So keep in mind, the hammer on a pre-charge matter gun, all that do is doing is allowing air to propel the pellet, more or less. So the valve will open, giving your pellet a higher pressure. Therefore, you can see your point of impact climbing after a few shots, and after a few more shots, pressure drops even further and your point of impact will go down again. A regulator is a kind of internal pressure regulator that divides your pressure tube into two sections. The first large section contains a primary high pressure. The second section, called a plenum, is just a tiny pressure chamber that contains a certain quantity of air at a preset pressure that is needed for the pellet speed that you desire. Sorry for that long explanation of what a regulator does. Just think of it as this. It maintains a certain velocity for the pellet. That's what a regulator does. And this one is adjustable. So here you have a value, we'll call it a value, pre-charged pneumatic air rifle, and it has some interesting features. It is adjustable both on regulator, here's your adjustment right here, underneath that, underneath that right here, this rubber cap. This is a degassing screw. You use a little Allen key for that included with a gun and then you also have your hammer being adjusted right here your hammer spring that's adjusted right here at the back of the gun so you have those two adjustments here's what i did when i tested the air venturi avenger i didn't change a thing i didn't do anything i didn't change one thing i shot it out of box as it came and guess what as you will see the performance was so impressive, I didn't feel I had to change anything with the given pellet that I shot. A regulated PCP for this amount of money is amazing. So again, those are your two dials you will be paying attention to on your Cool Avenger air rifle. On the right side, regulator pressure. On the left side, fill pressure. Enough said on that. How about the trigger? How about it is awesome? on the Avenger. Again, I didn't change anything on the two-stage trigger on this PCP. Out of box, I thought it was perfect. And again, remember, I am a trigger snob. I am. I'm a snob about triggers. I've said that in many gun reviews, firearm reviews. Dude, the trigger on this is amazing. You can adjust it if you don't like it. Again, more adjustability on the amazing Avenger. Now check this out, dudes. One cool thing about a pre-charged pneumatic carrying a certain amount of pressure, and this is our first example in the project, is that it can run a magazine. This is the magazine right here. See it? So it inserts what looks to be upside down. It really isn't upside down. And it's in here. I'm going to show you. This is actually loaded, so I could close the side lever on it and the safety is on. I'm gonna leave it like that, but I will show you images of the magazine in field when I'm loading it and what it looks like. There is a certain loading procedure. It is clearly explained in what I think is a very good manual. It's very to the point. The manual, there's a loading 
example, tells you exactly how to load your Avenger magazine and it follows the same protocol for a lot of PCPs. But the point I'm making here is that it does have a magazine. So you have 10 shots in 177, 177 and 22 caliber. You have nine shots if you choose a 25 caliber version of the Avenger. That is pretty excellent. So you don't have a single shot, you don't have a brake barrel. I love springers, that's what I call them. They're awesome, but they're a lot of work. Every time you gotta crank that barrel, a lot of them are very hard to crank, and they're single shots. They're single shots. Uh, one way or another, there's going to be work performed to propel the pellet. In this gun, and in, in all PCPs, the work is being performed either with your hand pump, your scuba refill fill system, like a scuba tank, or a high pressure compressor. I'll put links to those uh, below, by the way, taking you to my affiliated recommended store. Use my links, please. Thank you. Thank you. So what you have here, boys and girls, who may be new to air gunning, is a repeating air rifle. A repeating air rifle. All you have to do is cycle that smooth, biathlon-like side lever, which I absolutely love in the Avenger. It is made of knurled titanium. It's not titanium. The knob is actually polymer and the, actually the lever is metal. Mimmed metal. Yeah, not titanium. <laughs> not titanium. But you talk about a, a, an enjoyable way to load a repeating air rifle. Side lever is where it is at. It's fast. If you're on a rest, you don't have to uh, come out of your sight picture. There's no recoil with this thing. Easy breezy, love it. Very much like a biathlon gun, like the Anschutz, the Ishmash 72 KO, these super cool 22 biathlon guns that you've seen in the Olympics, Winter Olympics. Yeah, so side charging. One reason I have it loaded with a pellet because when the magazine is empty, it will not allow the side charging lever to close because it's giving you an indication there's a block in the magazine that you're out. It's just giving you the clue bird time to load a new magazine. The magazines, 10 rounds, I think were easy to load. I had no problems with them. I didn't experience any real jams with them. There might have been like a little hiccup where I didn't have the skirt fully seated. Just make, their, make sure they're seated as per the manual. You'll be fine. Buy some extra ones. They're affordable. And a lot of guns use the same type of magazine. So if you add to your air rifle collection, you'll be able to use a magazine. Probably on some other guns that I'm going to review. Here's a Picatinny rail at the top. Pretty sick easy way to mount a scope and this is just a Nikon 22 scope now with a pre-charge pneumatic it doesn't have that double impulse that the brake barrel spring powered guns do which can break regular firearm scopes you need a special air gun scope for those this has no dual snap you can put any scope you want on it this one has a close focusing objective I do always recommend that especially for any type of air rifle because you may shoot be shooting at 15 feet 25 feet then next you'll be out to 50 yards with this which i tested this at really excellent i like the scope by the way this little nikon and i think it's long gone nikon i don't think it's making scopes anymore unless something has changed features we talked about the trigger the stock its adjustability again i just kind of glazed over the adjustability very briefly the manual is fantastic if you want to know how to adjust a regulator adjust your hammer spring depressurizing the rifles right here only the best production values i'm not even going to do an overlay i'll just show you the freaking manual right here hammer spring velocity adjustment right there regulator adjustments in here and look the manual's only like actual text is like 10 pages that's it by the way it does have a single pellet loading tray that I don't have here in the bunker. I don't think any of you, you guys are going to be using that. Uh, that's meant for target shooters. Maybe they're changing pellet weights. They don't need a magazine, but there's an easy way that you can turn this into a single shot. The Air Venturi Avenger. How did it shoot? Nothing fancy. Well, I have been testing some brake barrel guns, and I got to tell you, like I indicated earlier, they are a pain in the butt to test. It's a lot of work. It's brake barrel, load, shoot, brake barrel, load, shoot. When I'm doing pest control, though, you're really not shooting that often, so it's not a big deal. So I can carry around loaded, and I do, or I wait till the shot and I break the barrel open. So the point is I'm not doing it consistently. When I'm testing, I'm shooting over and over and over and over again. It's a lot of work. With a PCP, easy. 
This gun with its trigger, its smooth side lever, dude, I totally enjoyed shooting it. Now, what I did not enjoy is when my reservoir started dropping acceptable shots out of this 180cc reservoir on the Avenger. I found it to be a little bit more if you're willing to accept some lower velocities. Now, again, I didn't tweak the, the hammer uh, spring, the velocity on that, and didn't do any uh, regulator adjustments. I just shot it out of box. And I was very happy with the velocity I got, the consistency I got, and as an indication, here's what I will show you. And I have video of this, I'll roll it in somewhere. I was shooting throughout testing these awesome Cro uh, Crossman Premier Hollow Point 14.3 grain affordable pellets. I didn't shoot much else, actually. Sorry about that. I mean, I should have shot some of these. Maybe some Beeman Silver Jets. I had more pellets, but I was just like, man, these are shooting so well at a great velocity with a relatively heavy pellet. I was happy. And so for this first PCP, I was just like, ah, it's good. Here's what I got. This is why I classify this as high power. 972 feet per second out of the Avenger. 972 feet per second. Uh, let me tell you, boys and girls, that is the best velocity that I personally, to this date, I'm sure it will change, have shot out of an air gun. That's an air gun. Air gun. The best velocity. Oftentimes, manufacturers will advertise this gun as being 1,200 feet per second in, 12, uh, in 22 uh, caliber. Usually, you have to use an ultra lightweight, ineffective for pest control pellet to get that. I'm not doing that. I'm using a 14, relatively heavy pellet 14.3 grain crossman premier and i'm getting 972 feet per second that was average extreme spread on one uh round of shooting was 10 fps my sd standard deviation was only three in another one i got 976 feet per second and it would drop about eight feet per second after each shot now that was a given environmental condition, a given altitude in Wyoming, so I can't tell you where you're shooting if you're gonna duplicate this. Again, no adjustments, 14.3 grain pellets. I was extraordinarily happy. I'll call it 1,000 feet per second in 22. That's approaching firearm type velocities. That is giving you a foot pounds uh, energy level that will take out that pest that you want to snipe with this. So enjoyable shooting, enjoyable velocities. Here's the accuracy on this. I'll start us out at 25 yards with an Air Venturi Avenger PCP in 22 caliber, which I do recommend. Here's what I wrote. Look, all superb, trigger, up arrow, loading, up arrow, accuracy, up arrow, consistency, up arrow. And then, oh, by the way, I said I charge it to 3,000 PSI. I lied, 2,400 PSI, because I'm a pussy and didn't want to charge it anymore with a hand pump. <clears throat> Heart swallow. 975 feet per second. That's with 2,400 PSI. Dude, if you pump this up, or wouldn't pump it up, you charge it to like 4,000 PSI. Make sure I'm telling you right. All the way to the top of that green section on your dial. Dude, again, you can set your regulator to change, you know, do these same velocities. And by the way, you don't always want ultimate velocity. You want to tune the velocity for a given pellet for accuracy and that will mean testing. So you may shoot a different pellet. Maybe you shoot this one right here, the Meister Krugen. Yeah, you shoot this one and you find, well, it shoots best at 950 feet per second. So you tune your regulator, your hammer spring for that, good to go. Again, refer to the manual. Look at that group, boom, boom, boom. Different max, so a little bit of variation. This is at 25 yards. Basically one ragged hole, four shots. Okay, let me tell you this. I've been testing some Springer guns. Like I said, they aren't coming near this level of accuracy, at least the ones that I was shooting. And by the way, they're the ones you saw on that receipt. I'll roll a little bit of video in. Then I pushed it out to 50 yards and it was windy. Then I did go up to 3000 PSI. My regulator is still making sure I shoot at 975 foot per second, 975 feet per second. I said, buy it. That's what I started the review out with. Freaking buy it. It's awesome. Look at that group at 50 yards. 
Are you kidding me? That's a good group at 50 yards. What did I say here? 10 rounds into that hole right there? Look at this, exclamation up arrow, exclamation up arrow. With a value priced pre-charged pneumatic, I'm gonna tell you, tell you in every respect, every respect, this was an enjoyable gun to shoot. It, it delivered on everything it said it would. This will be, I say, one of the best selling PCP air rifles ever. And there's gonna be other competitors maybe from Diana RWS, maybe Crossman, uh, Beeman, that are gonna mimic this. And by the way, some of those manufacturers do have guns near this price level that I hope to review. So, and they are also excellent. I'm not saying that this owns the market, but I'm just saying for the price that you're paying, you're getting $1,000 worth of PCP performance. Did you hear that? This is performing like a $1,000 PCP. You don't like the stock? Get over it. This should be in your collection. This should probably be the very first PCP air rifle you purchased right here. Link below, use my link. Would I buy it? Hell yeah, I would buy it. I did buy it. Well, for review. If it sucks, I'll tell you. I was like, yeah, this gun's crap. It doesn't deliver on anything. This broke, that broke. Nothing broke, worked. I will tell you that I didn't do a year-long test on this, shooting it every week. Maybe after that, I'll have a different opinion. My intention is to give it a long-term test as well. If you guys give me views on this, you use my links below. I'm excited about the support I'm getting from donors and general TMP audience. I'll continue to shoot it. I'll give you an update review on the Avenger. Say, hey, this is how I feel about this gun now. But, but from what I know, this gun is fantastic. Super lightweight too. And I misspoke. I said it was six and a half pounds. I just looked at my weight before I mounted the scope, six pounds, two ounces. So this will not weigh you down carrying it in field. So you could charge it up to a high pressure level, set your regulator, your hammer adjustment where you want it. Go take those pests out quietly, safely. It's not a firearm and this gets shipped right to your door. Let me know, boys and girls, if you buy an Air, I can't speak, Air Venturi Avenger. Let me know. Do you like it? Is it everything that I said it was? Is it quiet? Is the trigger good? Is it easy to fire with that side lever? I bet you, you will say, and come back and report that you also are submitting a five-star review on this Avenger. Well done. I mean, what a great gun to come out with first as a real air gun review. Real air gun review. All right, we're done. Thank you so much for coming with me here in the bunker. Sorry for the background noise. I got some AC getting pumped in here. Yeah, I was getting a little bit hot, a little bit hot, but I haven't heard any complaints, so I'm gonna keep doing it. This review is brought to you by the excellent donors to the Nut and Fancy Project. I simply ask you join and stay there for the rest of your life. I don't think that's too much to ask for the rest of your life. I used to say a certain time limit. No, because every month I have guys drop off. I'm like, oh crap, dude. It's hard keeping them in the project, in the donation environment. It's hard sometimes. So join for the rest of your life. I don't have tier levels. I charge six creations per month. You could just sit, do a dollar creation. That's like six bucks a month. That's like a no brainer. A homeless person can afford that. And I probably have some homeless people who are donors. 
Nothing fancy. I don't know about that. No, they could. Well, they have iPhones. <laughs> they do. I go on the, the corner. I see these guys popping out their iPhones. Homeless people. Like, oh, crap. Obama phone, I guess. Come back again. We'll do some more air rifling together. Uh, I think it's going to be fun. I think it might be kind of like the watch reviews. So when I started the watch reviews, there were very, very few people that appreciated them. I did get some pushback against them and guys like, oh, I don't want to watch a watch review. And then little by little, I keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Now I have watch addicts, watch addicts that love the watch content and they can't wait for the next WRV. I think it might be that way with the air guns. That's right. The more I post, the more fans will want more. There are, of course, dedicated air pistol, air rifle channels in YouTube, and that's all they do. And they test it, frankly, to ridiculous levels. I don't think I'm going to do that. It's going to just be, for my audience, what I think you guys want to know about the gun. And bottom line is would I buy it, and this Air Venturi is double thumbs up. See you next video, dudes. Thanks so much.